We are living in the greatest period in human history. A period of massive technological and economic advancement. Never in our history have we been so close to a world where we can live truly free and independent lives. But here's the thing. There are those with money, power, and influence who would rather see you dependent on them and the system they created. A system designed to keep you comfortable, apathetic, and distracted. We believe the road to true independence doesn't come through political elections or senseless regulation, but rather in maximizing the empowerment of the individual. If you feel the same way, then get ready. My name's Jason Stapleton. Welcome to Wealth, Power, and Influence. Well, living in the greatest period in human history, do you believe it? Well, if you I, if you like me, you're looking at 2021 and going, man, I just I can't wait to get started. I worked I worked a lot yesterday, even though Sunday is normally my day off. I just I couldn't wait to get a jump on the day. Uh, I I hope you guys had a really great vacation because we are back and we are ready to work and we got some big plans. I spent I spent the bulk of my uh, most the bulk of my vacation time really thinking through. Uh, what I think needs to needs to change with our organization, with the show, with everything else that we're doing, and and with uh, with the commitments that I am asking all of you to make. And we're talking about this, the Publish Three Sixty Five Challenge, and this idea of uh, of instead of looking at oh. I want to make X amount of money this year, or I want to lose X amount of weight, or I want to, you know, I, I want to have X, Y, and Z in my life. Instead of thinking about all the stuff we want, I want everybody to start thinking about the impact that we can make. And I, I know this sounds cheesy, I get it, but here's the thing. If we believe, you know, fundamentally, that every ethical dollar earned is a byproduct of value creation, that if we are going to ethically earn a living in America today that we must provide value, then the more value we create, the more impact we have in creating that value. So the more people we can impact with the value that we, that we create, the more money we will make. It is a, it is a byproduct of doing the right thing, of showing up every day, of, of being, as, as I've pointed out to, you know, to our team, being a client centric company and the morning mail this morning, I, I talked a little bit about this with you guys uh, and, and gave you some points of just like, hey, I, we, we really need to start rethinking this for a minute. We, sometimes we have to buck the trend. Some, sometimes we have to get a, away from what everybody else is doing. We got to look at what the 90 percent is doing and we got to go the other direction. And I, I don't know. I, I, I read seven books. I, I just realized this, Matt. I was doing the math on today. I read seven books over the holiday between Christmas and New Year's. Actually, this goes back probably between the end of Thanksgiving and New Year's. I read seven books. Now, um, I, I didn't read all of them page for page. I m listened to most of them via audiobook and jotted down notes. But I've become really comfortable in my morning routine of just going on this nice long walk, 45 minutes or an hour, listening to a book. And then as ideas come to me, I just jot them down uh, in, my, uh, in my little notebook on my phone. And then when I get back, I transfer them into the big notebook, right? And... Uh, it is, it's amazing the clarity of thought that comes from that. And I might be listening to a book on, I don't know, on one of the books I, I read this week, this, uh, at the end of this year was, uh, what was, it was called, it was something about Marvel comics. And I was like really into it. I, cause this is a, it's an incredible story the Marvel comic story. And I was reading this book about Marvel comics and I started thinking about, uh, some of the marketing stuff that we were doing. And so I'm starting jotting down stuff about marketing that's just coming out of nowhere while I'm listening to this book on, uh, on Marvel comics. But one of the things that we've been focused on, on this show is trying to show you wealth, power, and influence in, in its rawest form. And the idea has always been, and I said this in the last show before the end of the year, I said we, we've struggled as we've talked about this stuff to get away from the political conversations. We've struggled to get away from what everybody else is paying attention to. But I think what, what we've noticed and what Matt and I and Sarah and Amy all discussed in our last sprint at the end of the year is that, you know what, each and every one of us is an entrepreneur, whether we want to admit it or not. We are all in the business of us. 
You are in the business of you. I am in the business of me. The more successful we are at running our lives, the more wealth, health, happiness we're going to have. The more wealth, power, and influence we will amass. And if, if we agree that it'd be a good idea for good, honest people who believe in providing value, if we believe that those people should be the ones with the wealth, the power, and the influence, well, then you and I should want as much of that as we can get. And so as we started talking about what we were going to do moving forward, whether or not we were even going to keep doing the show, because that was a discussion we had. Matt and I sat across from the table and had that discussion. Should we even continue? But I feel like there's something here. I feel like there is something that we've keyed into. This idea that if, if you are in the business of you and we are about building wealth, power, and influence in our own lives, then this is something that everybody needs that everyone can benefit from. The same principles that I teach to my clients can be applied to you and your everyday life. And that's what I want to kind of talk about today. I want to talk about this idea of influence and, and conceptually some, some very conceptual ideas about f truth versus facts and how we are very easily manipulated as it relates to the reality that we see around us. So if you will, if you will give me a moment here, let, let me kind of build this up and build into it. I'm going to start with a very abstract idea, an idea of reality. What is reality? And then I'm going to try and use some examples based on what we're seeing in the news today to show you how reality is manipulated uh, based on the amount of context that we're given. So Let's, let me ask a couple of questions for you. And these are somewhat rhetorical, but if you'll just think through them as I ask them to you, uh, I think it's really going to help you kind of wrap your head around this abstract concept of reality. So if I was to ask you, what, what is reality? What is it? Like, it, you, can we touch it? Can we taste it? Is, is, this, is this coin real because I can pick it up? Is it real because it smells, right? That it has a color to it? What makes this real? It's, it's an interesting question, especially when you start talking about living in the matrix and all those fun little rabbit holes that you get to go down when you start thinking conceptually about what makes something real. What separates what we see in the world we exist in now versus the dream world that we're in? And a lot of people would say, well, Jason, what makes the coin real is it has a shape, it has color, it has a smell. It has sound. If I, if I click it, if I flick it, it makes a clinking sound. That's what makes it real. But you see, reality without context means nothing. It's meaningless. No smell, no sound, no shape, no color has any value to us in terms of reality until there is some context put with it. Once we understand things in context, once we know how to perceive the world around us, now all of a sudden reality begins to take shape. And when I'm, we, we've all been, I always talk about, imagine being dropped into a, a, a new country and walking around. And I, I've been in many, many countries that where there's lots of dangerous stuff like, you know, gigantic banana spiders and, uh, and snakes and all kinds of stuff. And if you're somebody who grows up and you've seen, say, a certain kind of snake, say like a habu snake, which you have in, uh, in Japan, which when I lived on Okinawa, there were habu snakes everywhere, very poisonous snakes. But as we're walking through the jungle, if you didn't know where the habu snake likes to hide, if you didn't recognize its, you know, it, how it moved and, and you didn't, we weren't paying attention to it, if you hadn't trained your mind to understand contextually what it meant when you saw that snake your gut reaction might be to go up and pet it might be to go up and grab it. I have a, my son, when he was little, used to get the car keys and I had to watch him like a hawk. This kid must have killed himself, almost killed himself five different times. He loved to take the keys and jam them into the light socket. I have no idea how this, how this kid is still breathing because every time I turned around, he would snag my keys and he'd be trying to jam them into a light socket somewhere. And it didn't matter how much I, I, I hollered how much I sat down. I talked to him about it. I'm like, no, this will hurt you. This is bad. Don't do that. He still wanted to do it. Jason's like, do yeah. as I say, not as I do. Right. 
<laughs> he was just following the example. Just following me around while I was doing it, right? But I'm like, I'm looking at the at the kid going, you, "You're you're nuts! Why are you doing that?" Well, to him, it was just a game. He didn't have any context, so he didn't see the danger. He didn't understand what was going to happen if he kept doing that again and again. Eventually, it was going to catch up with him. Now, luckily, he never hurt himself. But it's a great example of somebody not understanding the 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 context the context of what he's seeing and experiencing and therefore doesn't know how to avoid the dangers and what's scary is that in our world today there are a lot of people who are trying to manipulate your perception of the world around you by removing the context and i'll give you a few examples of this but re i mean Think about it in terms of, hang on, I wrote some more notes down. I just want to make sure I don't miss any of this stuff, right? Let's talk about truth versus facts. It's funny because I, I'm quite fond now of pointing out when people are presenting facts that don't tell the truth. And it's always comforting and, and kind of funny to see people respond by, they're like, well, what do you mean? It's a fact, but it's not truthful. How can facts not be truthful? They're facts. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I gotcha. I got you because now, now we start, I'm starting, I've broken through. There's something he doesn't understand. There's confusion. I've created confusion for him. His reality has now been distorted, hasn't it? And what can I do now? Now that his reality's distorted, now that he's confused, I can apply new context. And through that new context, I can hopefully change the way he perceives the information he receives later. Basically, I can change the way he perceives his own reality. So let me give you an example of this. This is a fun one, okay? This is a fact, a true, this is a fact, uh, a statistical fact. Donald Trump created more jobs in one month than President Obama created his entire eight years in office. Did you guys know that? That is a fact, ladies and gentlemen. It is undeniable. You can go and look it up. But what's missing from that fact is context, doesn't it? Well, what's the context surrounding that? Well, if I give you the context, is yes, he created he created more jobs in a single month than Obama did in his entire eight years because the preceding two months, he lost more jobs than I think any president has in American history. So you lose 40 million jobs, and then in one month you bring back 10 million jobs, and all of a sudden you're the guy who created more jobs than any president in history. Right? It's, it's context. If I remove the context, and I'm just going out preaching this mantra that, oh, Trump created more jobs than any president in history, created more jobs in one month than Obama created in entire eight years. Now all of a sudden I can change your perception of the world around you. I can manipulate you. And now you've got a bunch of numbskulls running around talking about how Trump's the greatest president who ever lived. Now, certainly Trump did some great things. But the fact that you are using is not truthful. And when we remove the context from those facts, we can manipulate what is true. And frankly, you see, folks, this is the crazy thing about it. If we perceive it ourselves... If we see it in our own reality and we come to the conclusion on our own, it is almost impossible to break that. It's not impossible, but it requires a massive amount of work to reframe and to recontextualize a set of events. It's why a lot of people still believe um, in, uh, Matt, can you think of another one, like a statistically untrue thing that was just presented as though it was fact, and then later we found out that, oh, that wasn't true, but if you ask people about it, they still think that, you know, that it, that it's true? Are you, are you like deliberately trying to bait me here? Yeah, I, no, no, no. What are you talking about? <laughs> I, I'm trying to think of- I can of definitely what, think of something that fits that description. Well, what is but it? that'll start a fight. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, well, here, let me give you another one. Let me, I'll give you another one then. So there are, there are a lot of people that think that it was the banks that destroyed the economy in 2008, 2009. 
Um, they, they don't realize that what really happened was the government manipulated interest rates and manipulated uh, and required these, these banks to write really bad loans. And at the end of the day, it is the requirement that the government put on the banks that ultimately cratered the economy in 2008. If you ask most of them, they'll tell you it was greedy bankers who manipulated uh, the uh, the markets for their own benefit. Uh, that is, while that is as it has a partial truth to it, it it really is not a truthful statement. But a lot of people believe it because it was the first thing that they were presented with. It was the first context they were given in the reality of this this massive economic uh, earthquake that we saw in two thousand eight and two thousand nine. But my point with this is my point is with this is that when you change the context, you change the reality. And when we remove the context and then we allow people to infer whatever we want, we can manipulate the masses in ways that most people never thought possible. Let me give you another example of this. OK, so let's take occupancy rates in hospitals. People are saying, oh, we're at, well, they're at 95 percent, 98 percent occupancy. In some cases, they're at over 100 percent occupancy in hospitals across the United States, claiming that this is a dire situation for our hospitals, that they are they're, they're ill equipped to deal with the massive inflow of people. And they throw out this concept that that 98 percent occupied as though this is something that hospitals need to worry about. The question is, has anybody ever stopped to ask, well, is it really something that they need to worry about? Is this a rare event for, uh, uh, for hospitals to be at 95, 98% capacity? I, have they ever been here before? And if we dive into the numbers, I can take a look at it. Let me add a little context for you. Okay? Occupancy rates in hospitals, if we go back to the 1980s, say 1985, the hospital occupancy rates, if you, if you average them across the United States, were anywhere between 52% and 99% in 1985. If we go to, say, 2004, occupancy rates were around 96%. If we go to 2012, from between 42% to 102% over occupancy. Now, why is that a big deal? What, what happened in 2014? Well, I'd have to go back and check, but I'm pretty sure that's the year when we had a really bad outbreak of the flu. And so you have all, yeah, there's actually stories you can go back and look at where hospitals were at over 100% capacity and they were setting up tents and flu, the, you know, the, uh, the people who had the flu who were showing up at the hospital were having to go outside into these tents. And all of a sudden, when we start applying some context, is it a concern? Well, certainly it's a concern. Anytime we start seeing uh, hospital rates exceed the total number of available beds, this is going to put a strain on our healthcare system. But is it something that we need to be so worried about that we destroy our entire economy, that we put 20 million people out of work? See, this is, this is where we start to run into some problems. See, now, now with context, we start to ask some different questions, don't we? Now with context... We say, oh, okay, now that I can see everything for what it is, maybe it's not as serious as I once thought. Still a concern, but maybe not worth completely upending our entire economy to do it. See, context is so critically important. When I, I teach my, when I teach my, uh, my clients about marketing and, uh, and about copywriting specifically when we start talking about what we're going to say and how we're going to say it. One of the things I'm constantly preaching to them is people t really have no context for anything. It's very, very difficult for them to have. So if your product, say your product is $50, how do you know if that's a good deal or a bad deal? Especially if what you have is truly unique. If you have a unique product, a unique selling proposition, as I would say, a brand, a unique promise of value, how do they know whether what you've got is really worth it or not? Well, without context, they can make no valuation. And so now we go through the process of saying, okay, well, let me show you how this compares to this other product. And let me show you all of the different ways that this product is better and this product will save you money and this product will save you time. And you start layering all of that stuff in. And then you simply have to ask the question, well, what is all of this time, all of this headache, all of this energy that you're expending? What is that worth to you? Is it more than $50? If so, 
then guess what? My product is perfect because you are getting far more than you receive. This takes us right back to this concept of creating value in excess of what we charge. See, in your life, as you're going out in your daily walk and you're trying to figure out what it is that, uh, how you're going to provide value to your employer, how you're going to provide value to the world, you need to be asking that question. How do I give value in advance, uh, in excess of what I'm charging? It might be your salary. It might be the, what you charge somebody for your product or your service. Either way, it doesn't matter whether we're talking about life or talking about business. Success comes by providing a greater value than what we charge. And understanding the context of the world around us helps us to make better decisions. While we're on the COVID thing, let's, let's talk about another COVID one. So let's talk about total number of deaths. Right now, about 320,000 people or so have officially, according to the official record, have died of COVID. Um, now, again, we remove a lot of the context because what is not reported on is, OK, but who's dying? Well, overwhelmingly, the, the people who are dying are the old or those with pre-existing or uh, uh, extenuating circumstances, right? People who are already susceptible to a, a virus like this. It is not young, healthy people that are dying. And frankly, under the age of 65, if you are in relatively good health, um, you stand a very, very good chance of surviving. But of course, that's not reported on. Why? Because removing context allows those in power to apply whatever, you know, perception of those numbers that they want to. They can now talk about the deaths. They can go out and they can find the outliers, which is always something that has made me chuckle. It's when you go out and they're like, they're like 320,000 people. And you say, well, yeah, but it's mostly very old people or people who have very serious pre-existing conditions that make them highly susceptible to, uh, you know, to, to struggling with this sort of stuff. They'll be like, no, no, look at Susie from, you know, Poughkeepsie, Illinois. She was only 14 years old or she was 18 years old, young and healthy and vibrant, and she died. It's like, yeah, okay, well, that's one out of the 321,000 people. She's the outlier. It's so important to know that those exist, but ultimately we need context. How many of those Susies are there out there? Fact is, there's not many. If we take a look at the 321,000 people who've died of coronavirus this year, it'd be important to have a little bit of context with that number, wouldn't it? So I went ahead and I just looked at the total number of deaths in 2020 relative to other years. Have we seen a significant increase in the total number of people who have died in 2020 than in previous years? And the fact is no. In fact, total deaths, death from all causes, are down in the United States. Now, much of that downward death is because everybody's been locked up. So it's important to understand the context, the context of those numbers as well. But here's the point I'm getting at. We were in no worse shape last year than we were in any other year. We had some years the flu takes over and kills a bunch of people, 80, 90,000 people. This year, 120,000 people died of coronavirus. But as a whole, total deaths were down. Now, what can we draw from this? Well, we can have all kinds of conversations about, well, should we have locked down? Should we not have locked down? When did we open up? Did we open up too soon? Should people be able to eat outdoors in restaurants or should they only be able to, you should be able to go to the park and walk around? We can have all of those arguments if you want to, and discussions if you want to have them. But we need the appropriate context to have those conversations. And when the media, when the power uh, struggle, when, when the power centers of this country decide to remove the context from the facts, they can disguise the truth. And when they disguise the truth, they can manipulate the way you perceive the world. And that is going to cause you to make terrible decisions for your own life. Remember, we're after wealth and power and influence. And so I want to tell you a little bit 
about the uh, the sponsors we've got for the show today, and then I want to move on and and talk a little bit. I'll, I'll uh, Matt, I'll give you a chance to give some thoughts because I know that you you're probably chomping at the bit over there. But I, I want to move on and talk a little bit about okay. Well, now, how do how do we use this? What does it mean to have power and influence in a society? What do we need to be doing today to amass more of that? What are the steps involved there? So we're going to talk a little bit about that as soon as I get done telling you about policy genius. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I live by a couple of basic principles, um, or what I call first principles. You shouldn't hurt people and you shouldn't take their stuff. And if you live on this earth... And it costs money to put you in the ground when you are dead or, you know, blaze your body up however you want to go out. You have a responsibility not to leave that burden to somebody else. You need enough cash on hand to pay for you to go in the ground or more importantly, you can go and get yourself some life insurance to make sure the people that you love are taken care of even if you happen to have an untimely death, Policy Genius can help you do that. Yeah, get insurance done first in 2021. Policy Genius can help you cross it off with ease. They make it easy for you to compare up to 30 top insurers at once and save 50% in the process. But there's no hassle because licensed experts work with you, not the insurance companies. Here's how it works. It's actually kind of a nice thing is that these people, um, these people just get paid to help you through the process. They don't get paid to pitch you one product over another. First thing you need to do, head over to policygenius.com. In minutes, in, ooh, in minutes, in minutes, you can take, uh, you can work out how much coverage you're going to need and compare quotes from the top insurers. Policy Genius will compare policies starting at as little as a dollar a day. You might even be eligible to skip the in-person medical exam, which is always nice. Make this the year that you finally cross life insurance off your list and get protected from the one get protection for the ones you love. Go to policygenius.com and get started today. You have to save 50% or more by comparing quotes and start the new year off with less worry about it. Policygenius.com. When it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. And then secondly, got Indochino. Now, guys. Are you, this may be the first time you're listening to this show. And if it is, thank you so very much for listening. We do me a favor. Just hit that like and subscribe and share button. Let everybody else know that you're liking this and that this is a place to be. Uh, that's how we grow. But if you've been listening, if you haven't been listening to this show, you know that Indochino, or you may not know that Indochino is one of my favorite companies on the planet. Uh, they make the nicest custom fitting uh, suits and shirts and, and coats and everything that you can imagine to look your very best. Uh, I'm getting married later on this year. Um, I figured, you know, one time wasn't enough. So, you know, I might as I might as well, <laughs> might as well test the waters again. <laughs> uh, no, I'm very excited. She's a wonderful lady. <laughs> <laughs> why, are you, Matt, why are you laughing, Matt? <laughs> There's a, I was like, what a ringing and It's a 50 50 <laughs> chance every time, Matt. So, you know, it's not right. like my odds went down. <laughs> I think they're still 50 50. All right. It's just not a coin flip. <laughs> <laughs> just keep flipping that coin. So, eventually, it's going to land on heads for good. <laughs> oh, so anyway, back to my story. So one of the things I'm getting married and we're doing very casual. So uh, a friend of mine is marrying us and we're going to do, you know, like a suit with no tie. And one of the things I, I told him, I said, I, when we asked him if he would marry us, I said, here's one of the things I want to do for you is I want to take you to Indochino and get you a custom tailored suit for, uh, for the wedding. And they're so reasonably priced. Like, yeah, you can get a, a suit that looks like it came from, uh, it, you know, it came from Ralph Lauren or I don't know, one of these other big companies, uh, Gucci, uh, but for a fraction of the price. And you can get, uh, you can get a virtual style consultant. You can go to one of their showrooms. You can personalize everything, the lining, the feel, the fit, all of it. And it only takes a few weeks to get your, uh, to get your suit back from you. Book a virtual appointment and shop online at Indochino.com. And right now you'll get $30 off any purchase of $399 or more when you enter code Stapleton at checkout. And I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. That's actually what a suit costs from them. It's super ridiculously good price, and I guarantee you nobody's going to be able to tell the difference between that and a $2,000 suit that some other knucklehead is going to be wearing because he's a sucker and he overpaid. Okay, that's right. $30, $30 off your purchase of $399 or more at Indochino.com, promo code Stapleton. Go check them out, Indochino.com, promo code Stapleton. 
All right, Matt, I'll throw it to you for a minute while I collect my thoughts and let you just kind of comment on this, this concept of context versus perception and reality. Yeah, I was, I was, my thoughts that I had were actually basically kind of the transition into the next step. What do you do with it now that you have this knowledge? And, uh, it, the, I think the key thing that stands out to me about all of this is coming to a position where you recognize and understand that, uh, that you are, um, you are an entrepreneur. You will, you are already in business for yourself. You just happen to right now, if you just have an employer, you happen to have one customer who you sell your services to, but you're an entrepreneur. It just so happens that if you have one customer who you sell your services to, you're just a crappy entrepreneur. So then um, I, people get this idea that entrepreneur is like the status that you attain, that you uh, either you're an employee or you become an entrepreneur, but you already are. And so once you adopt, once you realize that, once you get that, um, that understanding, then you realize your position relative to the rest of the world is basically you are trying to sell something to the rest of the world. And the, the rest of the world needs to buy what you're selling. Because if they don't, you're, you're going to be left alone out in the cold. This is the whole idea of human society is people um, bonding around the things that unite them, the things that, they, that you hold in common. And uh, so you need to be selling something other people are buying because your life depends upon it. And you want to be selling to as many people as possible because uh, human, human power is found in groups, in, in creating groups and creating collectives and organizing around them. So you need to be as good at selling what you have to sell as you possibly can because your life literally depends upon it. So then you need to know how to get yourself into other people's shoes. You need to get yourself how know how to get yourself uh, seeing the world through other people's eyes so that you can effectively communicate to them what you are trying to sell to them because that's a lot easier than trying to force them to buy it. Yeah. It's much easier to learn how to get them to take it on their own. So, so all of this requires uh, empathy and then ultimately understanding that it's impossible for you to have an objective perspective and it's impossible for anybody else to as well. We all come to the table with our own subjective perspective because by definition, we can't exist outside of our own, our own perspective, our own experience. And so when you understand that, it, 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 it reframes the way that you see the world and the way that you see yourself relating to other people. And the, the key insight with all of this is that this depends upon you um, uh, uh, recognizing this and then banding together with as many people as possible who see the world the same way and who feel the same way because your ultimate um, success and health and the success and health of your children depends upon all of this. Yeah, I, and, and let's unpack that just a little bit more because I, I think that conceptually this is this is going to be something new for a lot of people is that you are an entrepreneur whether you, you believe it or not. And, and up until now, I think we've kind of framed it as, oh, there are people who are worker bees and people who are wage slaves. Um, and then there are people who own their own companies and certainly controlling uh, the, the source of your income is an important step in becoming a, 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 as a free a person as you can and amassing the wealth and power and influence that you want for your life. But really, you, in thinking, if you want to think about it, here's maybe the best way to think about it is that if you work for someone else. You are just an entrepreneur who's sold his or who's traded his uh, his livelihood, his opportunity for more. He's traded that away for the security of or the perceived security of having a guaranteed income, a steady paycheck. And I think what we've shown over the last year is that that's really a, a that's really a false perception. Right. And we're talking about perceptions today is that if you think that your income is guaranteed, if you think that your job is secure, it's not. Um, you've, you've traded away a great deal of your own power and, and control for a perception that isn't real. And so I want to challenge everybody who listens to this show to start thinking of themselves as a business. Think about the business of you. And I, as I, I wrote about and I talked a little, I've talked about it in the Freedom Accelerator podcast that's coming out later this week. I said, you know, if you, if you are overweight um, and you don't have energy and you've just been neglecting your body, you can think about that a lot like, hey, you're just neglecting the equipment of your business. You, you just, you know, you wouldn't let a 20,000 or a hundred thousand or a million dollar piece of machinery just sit out in the yard and rust. But that's what a lot of us do with our bodies. Um, a lot of us with our education, right? We don't keep up with what's happening in the new trends and, and the new technology that's, that's happening around us. And because of that, we get left behind while everybody else advances because we neglected the, uh, I guess, if you want to think about it in terms of your business, that's your research and development. You spent no money on R&D 
and you're surprised that 10, 15, 20 years down the road, you can't compete in the economy of the 21st century. Well, guess what? You, you neglected the R&D. Don't, don't be surprised. And so what are some of these ways? And I want to transition now into kind of um, how we're going to amass more wealth, more power and influence. So let's talk a little bit about power. W what is power? We talked a little bit about this during our sprint too. Power is someone else is reliant on you or is, uh, or understands you or listens to you. Okay. Power is about other people needing you. If you look around and there's nobody who needs you, if your job is, if you're expendable in your job, if you don't have any rare or specialized skills, if nobody around you needs you in order for them to survive, you're in trouble. Now, the, what's, what's more important, because people look around like, well, I got my son and I got my wife and they all rely on me to feed them. They're my dependents. And so I do have some people who are reliant upon me. That's not the type of reliance that I'm talking about. See, that sort of reliance doesn't help you <laughs> in the sense uh, in the in the business sense. Right. Because those folks, if you stop feeding them, they starve with you. What is really powerful is when you can go out and there are people in positions of power and authority, other people who have power, who depend on you in some form or fashion for their own advancement. See, that's where real power begins to take hold. And so as we look around, how do we gain power over ourselves, our lives and others? Well, we need to influence, right? We need to have influence over those people in order for them to come and, and, and spend enough time that they actually, they actually become dependent on us. Now, what is influence? Influence is, this is my definition of influence. Influence is the ability to modify or control someone's thoughts, beliefs, or actions. It is, in a sense, your ability to control perception. Marketing, when you come down to it, is really nothing more than the ability to modify, manipulate perception. Doesn't mean lie, but manipulate perception. If we want to be more influential, we have to learn how to communicate our message better. We have to learn how to recognize the context through which most people see the world and then reframe that in a way that's going to not only be better, more beneficial for them, but also for us. See, influence is a skill that every single person should want. The business of you requires you be able to influence. It requires it for your own safety, for your own control of your life and the lives of others. You'll never build wealth if no one knows you, if they don't like you, they don't trust you. If you don't have influence over anyone, why would they listen to you? If you have no influence, you have no power. Now, if we want more of these things, we have to become someone who is worthy of attention. Someone who is worthy of being listened to. I've always said, you know, if, if you love to sit around and talk about freedom and liberty from your double wide trailer in, in, you know, Bucksville, Arkansas, and you don't got a pot to piss in or a penny to your name. And you're out there talking about, I talk about this with libertarians a lot and talk to libertarians say, dude, nobody's going to listen to your message. You have no status. You have no position. You're not living the values. You're not providing an example to others as to what following your prescription will lead to. And so we have to begin to change. We have to act in a way that makes us desirable. I talk about publish or die. If you want to be followed, guess what? you got to have an opinion about something. You've got to be regularly and consistently talking about your beliefs, your ideas with the world. Not only will this help to hone your ability to influence over time, but it also helps you begin creating tribe. And I don't care if you're trying to transform the way people think about autism or you're trying to uh, change a, 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 the direction of, a, of the country politically or if you're trying to add an extra zero to your bottom line next year. All of it hinges on whether or not people will pay attention to you and follow you. 
And so this is why I started the Publish 365 Challenge. This whole concept is, hey, we're going to be people who deliver value in excess of what we ask for every single day. The Publish 365 Challenge is this, it's really just a, a group of people. Matt talked about it. Hey, we got to have a group of people who are all like-minded, who are all moving in the same direction, who can support each other and, and have each other's backs and help each other succeed. Yeah, we're all, we all got our own self-interest. We're all trying to build our own wealth, power, and influence, but we're doing it together with the support of each other. See, the people who are trying to manipulate you, who are trying to change the context or remove it entirely from the way you perceive the world around you, those people are very well organized. They have very big groups and lots of money. And if we are going to succeed in overcoming the perceptions that we're, that, that we're being fed and the, rea the deceived reality that we're receiving, then we have to each and every day be trying to find those like-minded people. And one of the ways I did that was with the Publish 365 Challenge. I said, if you want to have an impact on the world around you, if you want to be someone who is worthy of being listened to so that you can increase your influence and your power, then this is where we're going to do it. And I'm using an entirely new method for doing this too. I'm using it through text. You can actually text me on my cell phone right now. If you go to 323-594-8781 and I'll prove it to you, I'm just going to, I'm going to go right here and I'm going to wait for one of you guys to text me. I'm going to keep talking, but I'm going to keep refreshing it. And uh, as soon as, uh, as soon as one of you guys texts me and says, Hey, I just heard you on the show, then I'm going to point it out to you guys and show you that this actually does come right to, uh, right to my mess, right to my cell phone. But my point is this, we're just a group of people. It doesn't cost anything who are saying, I want to have more power over my life. I recognize that I am an entrepreneur. I'm in the business of me. And that if I want to be successful, I'm going to have to do some things differently. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to be someone who's putting my ideas and putting value out into the world every single day. And so this morning I did my morning mail. I did my live stream to Instagram, which I love to do. I'm doing this show got three pieces of content that I'm delivering to you today that are designed to inspire you, help you understand the world around you better, to challenge you, to support you in your effort to become the best version of you that you can be. And what I believe to be true, what I know to be true, is that if I can get you thinking in terms of I'm a business and I get you working on you for long enough, pretty soon one of the things you're going to want to do you start controlling your income. You're going to say, you know what? I am in the business of me and I'm doing a pretty doggone good job of maximizing my wealth, power, and influence in my life. But I know if I want to take the next step, I'm going to have to control my own income. I'm going to have to take that leap. And instead of selling my services to only one person, I'm going to have to go out and I'm going to have to try and convince a lot of people that I'm worthy of their time, money, and attention. And you know what the best part is? is that all the things that you did to grow your influence and your power and your wealth in your own life are the same things that you're going to do to grow your business. Same influence techniques, same, same value proposition we're going to deliver. Nothing of it changes. It's just a mindset that changes. It's the context through which we see the world that changes. Okay? Joshua just texted me. He said, is this live or pre-recorded? Well, Josh, since you just texted this to me, I'm going to tell you right now, it's live, buddy. And I got another one from Amy who said, texting you. That's from Amy Erickson. That doesn't count, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> we got a few of you who are watching the show right now. Joshua, Amy, who are texting me at that number, 323-594-8781. Just text me and say, hey, Jason, I want to, I want to change my life. 21, 2021 is going to be my year where I create more influence and more wealth and more power in my life. I don't care if you're ready to start your own business or not. That's beside the point. You're already in business. You're in the business of you. And everything that we're going to talk about over the course of the next year is going to be funneled through, through our perception of that reality. Did you have a reality shift today? Did it, did it change your mindset a little bit when I said, oh, you're in the business of you, you are the entrepreneur of your own life? All of a sudden, you, you think about it in those terms, you're like, you can't, your head kind of explodes. You're like, dude, I've been thinking about this all wrong. Dude, all this stuff Jason's been talking about, business and marketing and influence, I didn't think it mattered to me. It matters to all of us. 
because ultimately we're all on the, on the path together. And ultimately, what do we all want for our own lives? We want more freedom. We want real freedom. Freedom that only comes from controlling one's income, being in, having wealth beyond what we need. And hopefully, if we can do it, making that income mobile. Okay? We want opportunity. We want ability. And we want the time to make it happen. These are all great. If you understand conceptually, if you understand conceptually, I said conceptually, jeez, I wrote the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable, Matt. Um, <laughs> but if you want to know a, uh, if you want to kind of read conceptually about these ideas, last year I wrote a book called The Nomadic Wealth Formula, and all you got to do is go to nomadicwealth.com and you can buy the book. I think it's 10 bucks. And uh, it'll give you a broad overview of some of the concepts that we've been diving into today. Uh, but Matt, any, any last thoughts on, on any of the, t- the topics? One, uh, two thoughts. One okay. was just kind of an observation. Uh, the the word corporation, uh, literally a corp refers to body. The corporation, you've heard people refer to it as like a legal person or legal personhood. Uh, that's because that's like the, the law bears out what we're saying, that that uh, it, it's people who are acting as legal agents. And so right now you're just a legal agent that represents a corporation of one, a corporation of yourself. You have no reason to to incorporate necessarily. There's some people that have theories about that, but you have no reason to incorporate yourself because um, there's no p- other people within your organization. The idea of starting a business is just that your own personal work is so expansive and has there's so much that you need to do that you need to bring in other people to help you with it and eventually you wind up with with a, a you know a large large business or a, a business that's as large as you um, as as your idea is worth um, but all of that starts with you 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 are a an entrepreneur running your own business already so that was the, the first thought the second thought was that um, you you would you address the whole like um, freedom thing that this is um, people have this idea that they think of of politics in this sense that or, or freedom in the in the political sense and this is the the major failure of the like our most of our audience is like right wing conservative libertarian somewhere along those lines and this has been the major failure of right wing conservative libertarian politics their political view is very much we're going to create a structure that will run itself and then we don't have to worry about it and we'll just do our own thing but the nature of human organization is that there is always going to be people who are going to say i want you to see the world the way I do. And I'm going to take control of the institutions and force you to see the way, see the world the way I do. And ultimately that will threaten um, your values. That'll threaten your way of life. That'll threaten that, that, that freedom that you claim to, to want. There's people out there who are always actively going to be working to take your freedom away from you. And if you aren't controlling the institutions yourself, they will be controlled by someone else. And the only way that you're going to do that is if you have wealth, power, and influence, because institutions work naturally by by elevating the people with wealth, power, and influence. They naturally buy their way to the top. This is just this is the circulation of the elites. This is just the natural organizational structure of human beings, as a, like from an anthropological perspective. So you have to understand this if you want to be successful in your life. Otherwise, yeah. you're fully dependent dependent on someone else, and you're fully dependent on someone else who most likely will take advantage of you at the first, first opportunity they get. And it, and it makes, it, here's the thing, is that it makes no difference whether you like the fact that that's the way it is or not. That is the way it is. And, and so right. to deny, this is one of the things that there is, a, a, you know, this the obstacle, this concept of the obstacle is the way uh, of, or, or, or amor fati, which basically means love your fate. It just means like, listen, whatever happens to you, it does you no good to wish it was different. It is the way it is. And you should be able to make the most of it. If you if you accept that the way things are, are the way they are. And secondly, that any obstacle you encounter is is the way you get to what you want. Now, all of a sudden, all these things that people are focused on, oh, I can't get ahead. Oh, I can't do this or that. All that kind of just goes away. And you can focus on what really matters, which are the things that you can control versus the things you can't. And so one of the things that Matt and I really want to do with this show is we want to be able to, we want this to be a place where we can, we accurately see reality, right? Where, where we are presenting to you the context that you need to be able to use accurate thinking. And the biggest problem that we have, uh, that we're going to have is, listen, we're still small. We have what, 10, 15,000 listeners, whatever it is that we've got now on the show. We want to grow this. 
We want this to be a place where people go to get good information. Because here's the thing. One of the biggest complaints you get are like, oh, the mainstream media is too big. It's, it's too big. They've got too big of a reach. Well, they didn't start that way. They never started that way. Fox News got started in the 90s. CNN was just a little bit before that. These, these companies have not been around all that long. We didn't have a Department of Education until the 1970s. But some of you guys didn't know that. But I digress. My point is this. Each and every day, empires are being built. Communities are being developed that are going to guide our, our nation, our world in the years to come. I am just egotistical enough to believe that we can be one of those people. I, I'm just crazy enough to believe that when you use accurate thinking, when you present the truth and you help people increase their own wealth, power, and influence, that that is a magnetic concept. And so this is what I want to ask you to do today, guys. If you like this show, if you love the, this concept and you want to be part of it, please subscribe. Leave us a rating and review. But most importantly, above all else, share this show. Share it with three, four, five, ten people. Send it to everybody on your email list. Just say, hey, I'm listening to this guy, uh, and it's amazing. And I think what he's saying has real value, and I think it has value to you in your life. And if you will do that for me, then we will be back here to do this show three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, trying our best to create a reality where you can have as much wealth, power, and influence in your life as you want. And it starts with understanding that you are an entrepreneur, that we're all in the business of us. Thanks so much for listening, guys. Until next time, be safe, be good. I'll talk to you then. If you enjoyed today's show, do me a favor, subscribe and then share it with a friend. And if you're ready to take the next step towards controlling your life, income, and future, then I'd like to help. Just go to controlthesource.com to get started.